happy almost April 15th to everybody. And I guess we're all happy that it doesn't mean as much uh, this year, but I know we're all, uh, we're, we're thinking about taxes uh, and there are a lot of new provisions and changes uh, already enacted, uh, including in the American Rescue Plan um, and others contemplated um, in, in legislation that we're, we're set to consider. Um, but uh, in terms of what's, what's been enacted, uh, as of course everybody knows, uh, we, um, we, you know, we, we have kept our promise to provide the, the $2,000 uh, in economic impact payments, otherwise known as stimulus checks. Uh, so the 600 plus 1400 dollars that was added uh, within the the American Rescue Plan, uh, many of the questions that we get from constituents, as Kate knows, um, relate to those checks. Um, and I'm sure that you'll have uh, questions on uh, on the call today. Um, there was another really, really important provision that is that is brand new, and I know, uh, folks have questions about, uh, and that is the, the, the new child tax credit, the fully refundable uh, tax credits of $3,000 uh, per child, $3,600 for kids under six. Um, and uh, as Kate knows, we've already gotten a lot of questions from constituents about how that's actually going to work in practice, how do people need to do anything to, uh, to take advantage of that, um, what are the rules, etc. So I, I I assume and, and hope that we'll, we'll be able to uh, answer as many of those questions as possible um, on, uh, on the call as well. There are a lot of other provisions of the bill, uh, you know, relating to taxation of unemployment benefits, uh, for example, uh, paid uh, sick leave uh, credits, employee retention tax credits, all kinds of things um, that may come up um, all in all. Uh, I think the bill is incredibly good news for, for my constituents. Uh, it, it, it's just that with any changes, people have questions and I'm, and I'm really, really grateful to you, Kate, for being available uh, to us like this to be able to, uh, to answer as, uh, as many as you can. Um, in, uh, in repayment for your efforts and also in all of our interest, something we've talked about before, uh, the next bill that that we are likely to consider the the jobs and infrastructure bill that President Biden has proposed uh, also includes what I think is an incredibly important provision to finally start investing in the IRS uh, as the vital agency that that it is. Uh, we all want good service from the IRS, and that requires investing in the people uh, who work there. Um, and as honest taxpayers. Uh, we all want to make sure that um, that that there are not a lot of you know multinational corporations and wealthy Americans uh, uh, whose taxes aren't being withheld from their paychecks, who aren't who are able to avoid paying taxes, which leaves all the rest of us with an even larger burden in terms of supporting what the federal government does for us. And and so President Biden has proposed a major new investment in the the capacity of the IRS to serve individual taxpayers as customers and to make sure um, that people who have been avoiding uh, or evading uh, paying taxes pay their fair share so that the burden um, is fairly, fairly shared. Um, so hopefully that's something we will be able to actually do this year. Um, with that, uh, very happy to turn things over to the expert in the room uh, and uh, look forward to uh, the discussion and questions. Um, although I may be transiting from my house to my car at some point very soon, I'll, I'll, I'll be listening in. Thanks. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, I know this this past year has been unique and challenging in, in just about every aspect of life. So hopefully today I can shed some light on, on at least uh, the tax aspect <laughs> a little bit. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Congressman, the there are so many questions about the economic impact payments and 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 the recovery rebate credit. Um, that's the majority of of the questions that come across my desk and and the desks of my colleagues as well. So, because of that, I thought I would 
provide a little bit of background um, about the recovery rebate credit and then and how it relates to the stimulus payments because I don't think that's that's quite um, clear to everyone that that seems to be uh, something that we're hearing. So I hope that's okay and I, I hope this um, is helpful. So last year, in response to the pandemic, um, Congress passed the CARES Act, which created a brand new refundable credit for the 2020 tax year. And it was called, it is called the recovery rebate credit. Um, typically, we claim taxes when we file tax returns for the year. So since the recovery rebate credit was a 2020 tax year credit, it wouldn't have been available until this filing season. So it wouldn't have been available until early 2021. Obviously, the goal was to get the money to those in need as quickly as possible. So waiting until 2021 um, was, was not ideal and, and really wouldn't work. So here is where the stimulus payments come come in. Um, officially called economic impact payments. I might call them EIPs or EAPs. Uh, forgive me if I do, but that's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, these, these economic impact payments were essentially advanced payments of that brand new recovery rebate credit. So we couldn't know the exact amount that each person would be entitled to for 2020. Uh, so we used 2019 tax information to estimate what we thought the credit would be. And for the first round of stimulus payments, we were actually able to use 2018 information if, if 2019 wasn't available. Uh, for the second round, though, we were only able to use 2019 tax information. So what that meant was if, if 2019 wasn't filed yet at that time or it hadn't finished processing, we weren't able to issue the second EIP automatically. And that's um, hopefully that answers some of the questions. A lot of people wondered why they, they got the first round without incident and then the second one didn't show up. Um, that's why. So now, fast forward, here we are, April 13th, 2021. Um, the 2020 tax year is over. So what that means is we no longer have to estimate what the credit amount will be. Rather, we can use the actual information. Um, because of this, once filing season began in February, the IRS was no longer legally authorized to issue any additional ep economic impact payments for the first or the second round. Instead, in order to get those payments, um, a person would have to claim the recovery rebate credit when they filed their 2020 1040 tax return. And this is true even for people who don't typically file or don't have a filing requirement. It's the only way to get the stimulus money from rounds one and two if you didn't already get it. Also, if you believe you're eligible for more money than you already received, you would also claim the credit to obtain the additional funds as well. Now, I'm, I'm sure everyone is aware we are in the process of issuing a third round of economic impact payments. Um, these I will call EIP-3. <laughs> the logistics for EIP-3 are similar to the first two rounds, except now we're dealing with a 2021 tax year credit rather than 2020. So now we are going back to estimating the amount of the credit because once again, it's an advanced payment. Um, if you don't have a processed 2020 or 2019 tax return, then we have nothing with which to estimate um, what we think the credit will be. So we will not issue you an EIP-3 until, until you have 2019 or 2020 on file. And um, I also want to mention that if we determine your eligibility based on 2019 and you weren't eligible, we will take a look at your 2020 tax return once it's filed. So it's not a one and done type situation. That, that was the case with the first round of economic impact payments. And so many people um, you know, had trouble getting them 
as as quickly as they should have because once we looked at um, their eligibility from say 2018, then we never looked again, but not so this time around. Um, so speaking of processed 2019 tax returns, and I, I hesitate to even bring it up, um, <laughs> but I know many people are still waiting on, on their returns. And also I know it's incredibly frustrating. We are continuing to work through the backlog. And in fact, we are opening mail at, at, at our normal, within our normal timeframes now. So I want to assure you, it's not a situation where tax returns are just languishing somewhere, gathering dust. Um, what happens is sometimes the returns need extra handling and, and therefore it requires an employee, an IRS employee to actually take extra steps with the tax return. As I'm sure you can imagine, we were not operating at full capacity last year. Uh, we are still, still not quite there, but, but we're close. Um, so, you know, things that might cause the, the 2019 return to be held up would be if there's an error on the return, uh, if it's incomplete, maybe there was an indicator of, of identity theft and we wanna make sure that that's not the case. Um, sometimes there are special forms that go along with it, an injured spouse form, for example. All of those things require further review and and that's why they just they just take a little bit longer. So. If you're still waiting for your 2019 return to process, please know that we, we truly are doing our very best to make that happen. And we will contact you if we need additional documentation. So that's another way um, to speed up the process. If, if you get a letter from us saying that we need to see a copy of your W-2, um, the sooner you get that back to us, the sooner we can finish processing the return. I do want to share also the, the most recent statistics we have are from March 26th, and at, at that time, we still had about 2 million individual tax returns that were received prior to 2021 in the processing pipeline. I'm sure the majority of those are from 2019. So that number, it sounds like a lot, but it's it's actually not relative to what, what we are used to handling. So hopefully um, we, will, we will get through that as quickly as we can. Um, three things I just wanna reiterate before we get to questions. Um, we are very, very much still in the process of issuing the third round of economic impact payments. So if you haven't gotten one yet, it's definitely too soon to panic. Um, we don't have an official timetable, well, not one that I'm privy to, <laughs> in terms of distributing payments, but I can say that we are able to send those out um, up until the very last day of the year. So um, there's plenty of time to, to, to get one at this point. Um, the second thing I wanna reiterate is that the only way to obtain payments from the first two rounds of stimulus is to file your 2020 income tax return and claim the recovery rebate credit. If you, if you already filed and you did not claim the credit, then you're gonna have to file an amended return um, so that we can make sure that you get your stimulus money. And finally, I think I've driven this point home, but please do be patient if you're still waiting for your 2019 tax return to process. Um, because we we are we are doing our best, and and to be completely honest with you, there's not much else you can do. Um, so patience is a virtue, I guess. <laughs> um, I think that's everything I wanted to to cover at this point. So um, I'm ready for questions. If you guys are great, thanks, Kate. We are going to start with a few frequently asked questions that were submitted beforehand, but we already have some questions rolling into the chat feature as well. So if you would like to ask Kate a question live, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. And when you do so, please ask along with your question, include your name and the town you are from. So please use the chat feature to first ask the question and I will let you know when you are up next. Um, but first, let's go into some frequently asked questions. Um, now would be a great time to just to start submitting the questions that you would like answered later on as well. All right, for our first pre-submitted question, Kate, 
I filed my taxes in February for the unemployment insurance wave of $10,200. How and when will the IRS make that tax change? So the, the IRS is in the process of updating our software to allow for an automatic adjustment. Um, we don't have an exact date yet, but the latest information that I'm aware of, and I hope I'm allowed to share, <laughs> is, um, is that the, the adjustments will, will start uh, going through in May. And so if you are owed money back um, based on the, that adjustment, then you, you will begin to see, um, see the addition to your refund or, or maybe just a refund um, in May. But you don't need to take any um, action in order to, to make that happen, we will, we will take care of that for you. Thanks, Kate. Mm -hmm. All right. How do I look into the status of my stimulus check? So I would say the, the quickest and easiest way would be to check on the IRS website. It's, it's www.irs.gov and it's called Get My Payment. You would just click on it. I believe you put in uh, a couple pieces of information and then you can see the status there. Now, um, sometimes we don't, have, we don't have a status and that can be frustrating. Um, we are updating that portal on a daily basis, but only once a day. So you don't need to keep checking back um, more than once in a given day. Um, you know, things that that information can also change. Sometimes there might be, for example, there might be a deposit date there, but if the bank rejects the deposit for some reason, then we would switch over to a paper check. And so that information would change um, to the date when the paper check would be issued. But that's that's the best way um, to find out what what's going on with your stimulus check. Thanks. All right, let's go into one more FAQ. And after that, we will begin taking live questions. Again, if you have a question uh, regarding anything IRS related, please first use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen to ask your question and include your name and the town you are from. Let's do one more FAQ, however. All right, Kate, how do we claim or do we need to claim stimulus payment on taxes? Um, I love that question because it's good news and it's easy to answer. The answer is no. The stimulus payments are not considered taxable income. You do not have to report them on your tax return. And also, they, they don't count towards um, qualifying for any other federal benefit programs either. So, um, so they shouldn't affect, affect those either. Great. Let's start with some live questions. First up, we have Stacy from New Providence. Stacy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi. You can probably also hear my five-year-old. <laughs> um, so I have a question about the stimulus payments, especially regarding to those that have already filed their 2020 taxes. Um, we filed ours in February. It did include some unemployment income on there. Um, so obviously with the new announcement that the IRS is removing unemployment income from the modified adjusted gross income, if that then changes your threshold and a stimulus that you would be able to receive or the amount of it, will that happen as part of that recalculation that the um, uh, EIP will be issued then? So that is a, a great question. Um, yes, it will, because... Um, when we make the adjustment, it, it will, the, the new information will be reflected on your account with us. And then we will look at that to determine eligibility for the stimulus payment. So yes, that should be an automatic um, change as well. Now, I, I do want to mention though, for, for the first and second stimulus payments, the first and second rounds, if, if you did not claim a recovery rebate credit for those on the return as filed, um, it would not automatically, that that would not, those that money would not automatically come based on the change to the unemployment income because um, we, we can't just, 
we aren't able to go in and say, oh, this person should have should have claimed the recovery rebate credit. We can we can adjust it if it is claimed, but we can't just go in and, and initiate the claiming. So um, for EIP three, it would be automatic. For the first two, if you didn't claim the recovery rebate credit, you would have to file an amended return. If you did claim the recovery rebate credit, then it then it would be automatic as well in that situation. So the only time you would have to amend is if you didn't claim the recovery rebate credit at all. <laughs> Did I confuse you more? Probably. <laughs> all good. Thank you so much. That was great. You're welcome. Thanks, Stacy. Let's go to Andrea in Union. Andrea, can you hear us? Hi. Andrea. Oh, there you are. Great. Okay. Hi, Kate. Hello. For CPA firm and um, clients have been having issues because the IRS has not uh, processed their 2019 returns. Um, they are getting notices. They may have made payments and those payments were not uh, processed or applied properly. So they're getting notices, and their concern is first that they're getting notices. I've been clearing those up, but the 2020 returns now that they're getting filed, if they're not caught up with 19 yet it's gonna cause an issue with 2020. And the IRS just seems to be still sending these notices out. And you know, I have to call and get a hold put on it. Uh, but of course the clients get very nervous when they get a, a notice like that. So that was my, my first uh, comment, you know, and, and asking why the IRS is doing that, it's too strong. <laughs> um, and then the other things are, you know, the. IRS is still not caught up, and I know they've extended it. I know you said that they're getting caught up, but they're still not 100% caught up, and it's still not 100% staffed. So why don't they extend the, the period past May 15th um, instead of just doing one month? I don't think that's, personally, I don't think that's long enough for everyone to have their 19 process. Well, um, I, I hear you. Uh, so it, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility that we would extend the filing season um, even more than we already have. I don't, I don't know if that's um, even being considered at the moment. Um, I'm not privy to that information, but, but it, it is a possibility. Um, and, and you're right. It, you know, as far as the correspondence that's going out, that's that's not correct. I know I know it's nerve wracking to get letters from the IRS. Sometimes I get things um, related to my employment and I get nervous. So I, I totally get it. Um, but, but, you know, what unfortunately those letters are automatically generated. Um, and so, you know, we're just seeing that there's no our computers are seeing that the 2019 is not on file on file yet. So they generate the notice and it goes out. Um, you know, we, we do try to make adjustments when those things happen, but um, you know, it, we can't, we can't catch all of them. And, and sometimes, you know, and obviously, so we don't know there's a problem sometimes until we start hearing about it. So I appreciate the, the note and I will certainly elevate that um, as, as I can. One other thing, um, and because because yes, as I said, and as you noted, we are we are still not at full capacity, uh, employee wise. But some of the locations where we process uh, mail is are are better staffed than others. So we actually have begun diverting um, correspondence to the locations where we have more employees working. So um, hopefully that should that should get things going a little faster as well. Thank you, Kate. Yep, thank you. Thanks, Andrea. So related to that, can I just ask a question? I'm on a telephone call. Some of us are still waiting for our refunds from 2019 taxes. And because of that, we don't get our stimulus because they haven't been processed. And we've called the congressman's office and they've called into IRS and nothing's happening. So this is Bob from Far Hill. Hi, Bob. So I, I know, I, I can imagine, I can't, I, I know that's super frustrating. And, you know, as far as the stimulus goes, the, the first and second round, you know, it's kind of a moot point because we, we can no longer issue those based on 2019 anyway. We would, 
we are now have we would now be issuing them based on a 2020 filing. So, um, you know, you should be able to get any stimulus money that you're owed by claiming the recovery rebate credit uh, while you, you know, I, I know while you wait for your 2019. I, and, you know, like I said, it, it is frustrating, but 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 that that processing issue shouldn't affect um, your ability to get to claim the recovery rebate credit. You know, it's not just that. It's, it's again, the rebate, you know, I mean, our refund, it's not even the rebate, it's the refund first. You know? It's like, sure. and, and you know, some of us, you know, because we have to wait for K-1s, you know, especially those of us who are self-employed and unemployed at the moment, we have to wait for K-1s to come in from the, the things and everyone's behind, as you said, with COVID. So that happens to all these little companies. Some of them are out of business. And sure. so we have to file an extension, but we got to pay estimated taxes on May 15th and right. we don't have any, you know, the cash is going one way. It's all going to the government and nothing's coming to the people. And I don't think this is what the president wants. And, you know, you know, someone needs to be looking into this. And I, by the way, there's so many of us unemployed. I even said to one of the staffers, I forget which one uh, that works in Congressman Malinowski's office, you know, hire people like us. We're ready to work. Sure. Sure. And, and Bob, you said you have been in contact with our staff, correct? Yes, that is true. Yeah. Okay. And you have an, a nice staff and I've called like three times in the past. So, you know, you can look it up in the, in the records and uh, I can try to, t no, I can't do it when I'm on, on my phone. I, I keep a record of who I speak with on the phone, you know, like in the call notes. <laughs> so, right. You know, so yeah, I, you and know, Bob, and, what town you know, did you say? Sorry, Bob, what town Bar did you Hills. say we're from? Short Hills? Far Hills. Far Bar Hills. Hills. We have a Far Hills mail address, but we're actually in Chester Township. Okay. We're actually no in worries. Chester Township. I will uh, reach out to our staff, see who your caseworker is, and they will be in touch. Oh, that would be really appreciative. Because like I said, you know, it's challenging. You know, my kids, you know, even though they're over 24, you know, they're still, you know, unemployed. I mean, uh, it's like this, this COVID thing hit a lot of us really hard. And, you know, it's hard to plan cash flow when, you know, you file your taxes and you don't get your refunds and you don't get this and you don't get, and, you know, and everything's going one way and the towns want their real estate tax and, you know, New Jersey wants its tax and everyone wants their tax and I got to make an estimated tax payment to the IRS. And I right. it's like, okay, you know, it, and the stock market's not going in the right direction for some of us. So, <laughs> you know. Thanks. I appreciate it. Bob, we will have a caseworker reach out to you and hopefully we can get uh, your situation sorted out. Um, but thanks yes. for reaching out. So the, yeah, yeah, they'll see a Far Hills mailing address. Great. Look for the Far Hills mailing address and it's in Chester Township. So okay. they'll know. Great. It is. Thank okay. you so much, Bob. Thanks. And I see a few thanks. people have their hands raised. We, uh, if you have a question, please use the chat feature at the bottom of their screen. That's how we are fielding questions. Please first ask your question and then please uh, also include your name and the town you are from. Um, we will try to get to as many questions as we can in this hour. Let's go to Ronnie from Roxbury. Ronnie, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, my first question is, we filed our original 2019 tax return. It was processed fine. Then we had to file um, a 1040X, which shows on the uh, Where's My attended, uh, Amended Return on the IRS website as having been received on August 4th, but still, as of today, has not been processed. And then, unfortunately, we had to file a second 1040X. <coughs> That was mailed to the IRS on November 4th, and there's <coughs> excuse me, no mention of the IRS even receiving this, so I don't even know if they've received it. <coughs> so first we wanted to know, you know, when can we expect those returns to be processed? And then as an additional, um, I guess, problem with this, we haven't filed 2020 yet. We haven't gotten our third stimulus, even though our original 2019 income was well below the limits of eligibility. And when we do file our 2020 tax return, 
I'm afraid we're going to have a problem because on our second 1040X, which the IRS has not even acknowledged receiving, we have a capital loss carryover. So when I when we put that down on our 2020 return, isn't the IRS going to say, wait a minute, we don't see that you had a capital loss carryover from 2019. So we have like this big mess. Okay, um, so, you know, I, I definitely hear you. I, um, I, I, and I see your point about the capital loss carryover, um, but it, it, it may not, um, it may not cause a problem because we, we don't automatically, when you claim a capital loss carryover, we don't automatically look at a, at a prior year when, when the return is being processed. Um, we might, you know, we might, if it gets picked up for audit, you know, something like that, but that, that's really a separate process and that wouldn't, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Um, they're, they're really worked up about it too. Um, they, they, anyway, so if that makes sense, we wouldn't, it wouldn't hold up the processing of your 2020 tax return. Um, but you know, and I, I definitely see your, where your concern, um, is coming from. Um, but hopefully, you know, we will get your amended returns, um, like, I don't processed. even know, because I mailed the um, the second amended return sure, on sure. November 4th, would the, where's my amended return IRS status indicate that, shouldn't it have indicated it was received? Like, did it get lost in the mail? I don't know what happened. Should I resend it? You know, that's, that's a great question. I, I, I believe it would show up there um, once, so once we one received show it. Up? Because it, the first one showed up. Right, right. Um, and it, you know, it, it may be, the, I mean, maybe because it's the second amended return. I mean, we do, amended returns do take longer in general anyway. Um, paper returns take longer. So a paper amended return <laughs> is um, is checking all the boxes for taking a long time. Um, but I- Five months? I, right. No, I, I agree. You know, it might be worth, I, I think of two suggestions. One would be to call and, and ask. Um, I did. But I had no record. Okay. Okay. And the first one, which still, which says it was process, uh, not processed, but received, they said, we don't know when it'll be processed. Okay. Um, well, another option may be uh, this year for the first time, um, you can actually file an amended return electronically. Um, so, you know, I, we, I, I would never encourage someone to file two returns um, for the same for the same year for the same tax period. Um, that can that can cause issues. I mean, not major issues, but that's 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 really not the best course of action. But seeing as um, how we don't seem to have a record of your of your latest 1040x, it might be worth trying that route. Um, another, another suggestion, if you wanted to get in touch with um, your district congressional office with your information, they can contact me and um, I can have someone take a look at your account um, on our end and, and let you know if we see any indicators or um, maybe we could see that the return was received, but it's still being processed. And then that way we could we could know for sure um, whether or not your return ever made it to us. That, that's another option. Okay, so as far as getting my 2000, um, the original 2019 return was processed. And like I said, my our income was well below the el limited eligibility to get the third stimulus. But we, when I go to the uh, get my payment status, it still shows payment status not available. I wonder if, and I'm, I'm not certain, but I'm wondering if because we did get the first amended 1040 um, tax return, maybe there's some sort of hold indicator on your account uh, until we until we get it processed. Sometimes sometimes they do that. We, we put freeze codes on accounts um, until we know uh, what you know we know what's up with it and then and then we remove that and then things can kind of flow from there so I can't tell you for certain um, you know without looking at your account but it, it might be something like that so when I 
when we do file our 2020 tax return, which we should be doing probably in the next couple of weeks, would they possibly then give us the stimulus based on that? Yes, so, definitely, definitely. And yep. that was August 4th that they said that they received the first one. How is it that it's still not processed now that it's Ronnie, I have, and a half months. <laughs> Ronnie, I have dropped our casework uh, online form into the chat feature to you. Please oh, okay. fill that out and we will have a caseworker get in contact with Kate and hopefully we can look into your issue. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Next up, we have Gino from Sterling. Gino, can you hear us? Gino, do we have you? I just unmuted it. Can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you now. Yeah, I, I feel bad for Bob from Far Hills. Um, my check was processed, but they still haven't processed my forms either. I have a question. Um, I spoke in at two different times at length with an I IRS uh, customer service person, and they both were putting me on hold and checking to see whether my form had any kind of flag or status, what you had mentioned, some things may hold up processing. That, that wasn't the case. So still waiting, hoping it's not lost. Now, you mentioned earlier that the third round of the stimulus um, wouldn't be sent if the 2019 wasn't processed, is that correct? Uh, yes, if we don't have 2019 or 2020 on file, then we would not have issued uh, the third round yet. That's correct. Not to open up a can of worms, but we received the, the third stimulus and I have uh, an account on the website, but my 2019 uh, filing is still considered not filed. Is that something that has to be, is the website something that has to be updated or did I receive a, um, a, a, a payment improperly for the third stimulus? Um, well, with, you know, and you, I don't wanna ask you to disclose any personal information, but I, I would say sometimes people do get the stimulus payments based on, um, you know, VA benefits or social security income, you know, if we have, if we have your information um, from one of those agencies, then we would use that to issue a payment. So it could have been, it could have been something like that. Um, it, it also could be uh, a mistake. <laughs> um, we, we rarely make them, but we do on occasion. <laughs> Um, I recently ordered uh, Publication 17 from the Government Printing Office, and I also was able to speak to an um, a, a IRS customer service person, received a bunch of paper forms. Are they updated? What they're sending out now, are those current, or, or do I have to just download, which I didn't want to do, download forms from the website? Um, if they're sending them out to you, they should be current, yes. Um, the, the website is, you know, we... We do update the website with the most current forms, but if um, if someone is if if you're requesting forms and having them sent, yeah, they should be current. Okay, and my wife um, receives um, what was that? Uh, she receives unemployment. Um, would you set, mention again how that's being taxed by the federal government? She's she's self-employed and, and got money through the federal government gave the uh, DOL from uh, New Jersey money to about um how is that being taxed by the federal government okay so generally speaking um unemployment income is considered taxable income for purposes of um of federal income taxes this um this year with the american rescue plan um it was just determined that the first ten thousand two hundred dollars of unemployment income would not be taxable. So um, if, you know, when you're, if, if, when you're doing your taxes, if, if you have more than that, then the, um, the excess would be taxable, but that first 10,200 would not be considered um, part of the income. And so you don't want to include that uh, when you're filing. And if you already did, if you already filed and included it, then we are working to, um, to make an automatic adjustment on, on your behalf. And, um, and that should, we should start seeing those in May, in mid-May. 
because there was an additional 300 that was also processed through the DOL. Is that part of the total um, unemployment? Or is that something different? Oh, six on I'm sorry. You know, that's a good question. I, I'm not, I am not sure on that one. I believe though that it it's it's the same, it's treated the same as um as the other unemployment. So if you know, I, I presume when you get your 1099 G that details the amount of unemployment for the year, those extra payments are included in that total. So um, you know, they would count towards the 10,200, I I believe. I appreciate that. Now, later on, will somebody be talking about um, New Jersey taxes, some other uh, speaker? Right now, this session is specifically for IRS related questions. If you do have a specific question regarding the SALT deduction or New Jersey related taxes, uh, please contact our office. I will put our contact page in the chat feature right now. If you have a specific question regarding legislation um, on New Jersey real estate taxes or taxes of that matter. All right, thank you everybody for providing this opportunity. Thank you, Gina. Next up, we have Farhad from Bridgewater. Farhad, can you hear us? Yes. Go ahead, go ahead with your question. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, you always say in the, at the IRS that you contact taxpayers by mail. Is that right? You should never, you never contact by phone. Is that right? Well, we do promote that message and it's true 99% of the time, but there are, <laughs> there are some rare occasions when we might reach out by phone. Um, and you know, that would be uh, like, for example, the private debt collection agencies that work for the IRS, they contact by phone, but they are supposed to send out a letter first, letting, letting someone know that we will be calling. Um, and the only other, uh, the only other time I can think of is uh, when a, when you would get a phone call would be if you made um, an inquiry through the through your congressional office um, and then someone from the IRS uh, was reaching out to you by phone. But again, we we would have notified you ahead of time that that was going to be happening. Um, so I, I know my it's sister, confusing. <laughs> it was my sister and she was not notified. She was just called and we were not even sure it was from the IRS. Well, I can tell you yes. there are a lot of scammers that call and say they are from the IRS, but but I what I IRS. Go ahead. this one was. This one oh, was from the IRS. Oh, okay. Well, I, I was gonna say that that is that's interesting. Um the the we will I mean the IRS will never ask you for um a, a payment over the phone or, or to provide, you know, bank account information. So, I mean, we may ask you a question to, to clarify something in processing a tax return, for example, but, um, but that's- A lot of freedom to uh, do what they like. Your agents have a lot of freedom in their act. Uh, well, I, <laughs> um, I'm not, I, I guess that's relative and, um, and, you know, people sometimes do things they're not supposed to um, in every walk of life. But, but uh, you know, without, I don't know the circumstances um, for your sister's situation. Um, I can only speak generally, but, but, um, but I, I can't think of a, I mean, I'm not aware of, of phone calls being made other than the two um, situations I described. Yes. Thanks. Long time we didn't know whether it was real or not. Then we found out it was. So sure. it was very, you know. So sure. we should, anything we can do to not that have that happen? Uh, you know, well, I can say this. Um, IRS employees all have badge numbers. Um, so if you were contacted, you could ask someone for their badge number. And then, um, well, the way I would usually handle it is if you if you called um, the district office and uh, the district congressional office and said, "Hey, um, someone called me. Here's their badge number." Then I can then then the district office staffer can get in touch with me and I can look it up and see 
um, if it's a legitimate IRS employee. I know that sounds like a lot of steps, but it it is it is an option. Yes, that's we are our office is if you receive a call, a call and call and exam, you can contact our office and we are more than likely able to uh, vet that call and vet that person for you. So you're more than welcome to reach out to our office if that happens to anyone on this call. I have a, I also have a question from the representative, from the congressman. If you have a question for the congressman, uh, please use the, I dropped the contact page in the chat feature. If you have a question specifically for the congressman unrelated to our conversation today, we're again, happy to field that question and uh, either have Tom or a staff member uh, look into your inquiry as well. So that website is malinowski.house.gov slash contact. So please use that uh, online form and we will do our best to get you an answer to your question. I said about Mark 10 Cohen. emails, but I have never got any real responses. Well, if use that uh, form and I will look out for your inquiry and take a look into it and make sure you get an answer to your question. Let's move on to Carol from Long Valley. Carol, can you hear us? Yes, I can, thank you. Um, I filed my 2020 taxes in early March and we had unemployment income. Now I owe money before that unemployment income is taken off, but I'm getting money back when it is taken off. Do I write the check or not? <laughs> Oh, you stumped me, Carol. Um, that is a oh, really- I don't want to do that. No, I'm just kidding. That's a really good question. Um, actually, that came, across, that came across my desk recently. And I would say, um, because I'm a risk averse person, you, you, know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be late on, on a payment. And just in case, um, in case you, something's wrong, um, I would not want to see you get penalized for, for sending a payment in um, after the May 17th uh, due date. And I don't know if, you know, if our automatic corrections are going to be, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to have happened by then either. So I would say, <laughs> I think what I recommended was um, that some, if you make a partial payment, oh, this is so tricky because I, you know, then, then you have to wait to get it back. I mean, if you're absolutely certain 100% that you're not going to owe, then, then I would say you can wait, you can safely wait because, um, there won't be a penalty. We can't, you know, the penalty is based on a percentage of what you owe and a percentage of zero is zero. So, um, uh, <laughs> so I, I just, I, I would say be aware that that, that that payment deadline is May 17th. Um, and you know, it's, it's possible that we won't have it corrected by then, but if you're certain that you're, that you don't owe anything once it is corrected, then you probably don't need to make a payment. Okay. Cause I, right now at this moment in time, according to the IRS, I owe them about $500, but once you fix it, I should be getting like eighteen hundred dollars back. Okay, okay. Then, then you're probably you're probably okay. And I okay. I would hate to say send in the payment and then I mean you will get it back eventually, but um, but it you know it's not it's not really a quick turnaround. It's often not a quick turnaround. So I don't want to um, you know I don't want to have you be out the five hundred any longer or or at all <laughs> if you don't need to be. And I also filed an amended 2019 in May of last year, and that still hasn't been processed. So oh you're gosh. at least 10 months behind. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is, that is, I, I think, you know what? I think that is the longest one I've heard about. I've heard about some from June, but I think you might have May, the winner there. <laughs> May 17th, you received it. Oh my goodness. That's my daughter's birthday. <laughs> um, well, I, I really, I'm so sorry about that. I, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine. Um, how frustrating it is. And, and I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what, what's holding it up. Um, but hopefully it, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get it resolved um, before it reaches a year. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Carol. 
We have just time for about one or two more questions. Uh, if your question, if we did not get to you, please use that contact form or that casework form that I had dropped in the chat feature and we will do our best to uh, get an answer for you. I see some people have their hands raised. If you would like to put yourself into the question queue, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, next up, we have Mohan from Parsippany. Mohan, can you hear us? Yes. Hi, guys. Yes, oh, I'm happy to hear you. Hey, yeah. Um, if I owe any money to IR, as usually the year end, right? Is there any specific time frame that uh, I have to pay without any penalty? Like, uh, usually to be the April 14th is my, uh, you know, tax file return the deadline before that do i need to pay or as soon as the december is end for this current year say for example 20 and i am um, for 2019 to 2020 so i'll have to um, pay the beginning of the jan 2021 is that is the deadline in general i'm not going you know I, I, yes i think i i understand your question and um the the deadline to pay for, right. for the prior year is is the same as the due date for the tax return. So exactly, normally, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. normally it's April 15th. This year it's May 17th, but but no, you don't have to pay um, you know, until until that until that April 15th. Um, okay. Cool. That that applies to every year, normal uh, every year, right? Uh, for it it does. For, for and yeah. this is for individual individual um, taxes. Some business taxes have different rules, but um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. But yes, it's 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 the April fifteenth date that you have to pay by. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. That's all. You're I'm welcome. On. Thanks, Melhan. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Brian in Bridgewater. Brian, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi, Kate. Thank you for your time this afternoon. I guess I've got two questions. One is about the $300 weekly checks we're getting. Um, how can I elect to withhold federal taxes from that? And secondly, you mentioned about the 10200 exemption. I believe there are income limits to that as well. Uh, I just wanted to confirm that. Um, okay, so the the three hundred dollar payments. I I'm assuming are you, you're talking about unemployment, the the additional unemployment. Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay. Um, now I can't say for sure, but I believe that 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 would be done um, with the state agency that that sends out the payments. I think you can elect to have them withhold on your behalf, um, but you would need to get in touch with them to do that. Um, well, we're, we're withholding from the state, from the New Jersey unemployment we're getting, but we, we can't seem to find an option to withhold from the federal funds. Okay, um, you know what? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. So um, let, me, let me find out. And if you don't mind leaving your contact information, um, with, with the with the congressional office and I can get back to you about that. Um, yes, Brian, leave your email in the chat feature and I will be sure to pass it along and have someone reach out to you. Thank you. And the second part of the question uh, was the 10,200, I believe they're, they're exemptions. If you make over a certain amount, you do not get the exemption. Is that correct? Uh, <laughs> I, that it, I don't know. I don't know that either, Brian. I'm so sorry. Um, I I had not encountered that before. I haven't heard. I haven't heard that. Um, generally, there are phase out amounts for everything, so it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but I don't. I don't know the answer to that. But I will find out for you. Yeah, I um, think it's. I think it's 150 thousand for a couple. But if you can confirm that at the same time for the 300, I greatly appreciate it. Thank I will. I certainly will. And I'm sorry that you have to wait longer. Um, you stumped me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have heard that as well. Uh, this is Rudy Kaprowski from Hillsboro. I've I've uh, read that in descriptions of the new bill. Mm. Well, thank I fall, you. I fall under that category as well. Well, we will get, uh, Brian, I know I have your email address, and we will get an answer for you, and we'll, we will have someone reach out. I appreciate the follow-up. Thank you. No worries. We have time for just one more question. So we are going to go to Bill 
from Gladstone. Bill, can you hear us? Bill, do we have you on the line? Yes, yes I'm here. Go ahead with your question. Uh, thanks, Kate. Um, so I'm calling on behalf of my sister who filed uh, through an enrolled agent her 2019 tax return. It was done electronically on March 14th, 2020. Now, I know you've talked about how uh, people are, or, or your agency is uh, still dealing with 2019 returns. So are you dealing with these uh, on the basis of when they were received? Because I think March, 2020 was an early submission. Certainly. Um, to my knowledge, the way that these were being handled is uh, refund due returns were prioritized um, to get to get people their money as quickly as possible. This was a five thousand dollar refund. OK, so that uh, well, that doesn't fit the category. Um, so. You know that that's my understanding in general of how of how the backlog was being worked. Um, my guess is there's something that we are trying to verify. Um, now, did you say it, you said it was e-filed, correct? It was e-filed by an enrolled agent. Okay. Um, are you certain that it was accepted, uh, or or is she certain? Because sometimes um, the e-files will reject, and it's possible. I'm, I mean, maybe, maybe, it, maybe it wasn't actually um, accepted by the IRS. That is, that is a, a possibility. No, we do not know. The, uh, the preparer has been unresponsive. Okay. Um, well, you can certainly, um, you know, you can, you can get in touch with us either um, yourself or via the the congressional office and we can take a look at at your sister's account and see if we have um any record of the filing uh we cert i'm i'm honestly this is kind of baffling to me because e-filed returns um generally don't have this type of issue and and if there was something that we needed uh, from your sister to finish processing the return, we would have we would have sent a letter to her asking her for that. So, um, I I I am thinking that it, it might be the case that it just never actually made it to us. Okay, I understand that. We did receive a letter that was dated uh, February fifteenth, so that's two months ago, and okay. uh, it said we had not filed her two thousand and nineteen return, and it included. Uh, a request uh, for additional information, which we did send in, and uh, that was mailed in on March 10th, which is now one month ago. Uh, okay. Do you think that's an appropriate amount of time for uh, the IRS to respond? I, normally, I would say yes, um, depending on what the request was for, but I I am wondering if you know that letter that you got was um, was maybe sent in error. Um, well, not in error per our records. If we don't have the return, then it would have been um, an accurate letter. But um, you know, I'm I'm wondering if if it was just automatically generated. If that letter was just automatically generated, there may not be a specific person assigned to the to 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 review the information that comes in so um i i would say at the very least you you should have heard from us to let you know that we needed more time sometimes we ask for things it comes in we um and then we send out a letter that said we we received your information but we still need another 60 days or something so um, and I, and usually those letters are sent out within 30 days if, if we need more time. So, yeah, I, I think you probably should have at least heard something. So, uh, the rub, uh, and the reason I'm really interested in this call today is that, uh, we attempted to file electronically her 2020 return using TurboTax. And, uh, one of the items they asked for is what was your adjusted gross income from last year? Uh, all of that was done, and the IRS has rejected the electronic filing. To me, 
That sounds as if the 2019 return is not in your computer system. How can I learn that you have indeed received the 2019 return? So you can you can call. Um, you can you can have the congressional office contact, reach out to me or the taxpayer advocate office. Um, another option is on irs.gov, you actually are able now to register um, to see your own account information, much similar to maybe like a bank, um, if you know, if you do online banking. So, it, you know, if you, if you successfully register to get to view your IRS account, there's a ton of information there, including record of filing. So mm. that would be another way to see if we have it, um, you know, if, if you want to go about it yourself. But I, you know, the taxpayer advocate um, is they have account access. They would be able to tell you very quickly um, whether or not we have it. And Bill, you, um, if your sister is a resident of our district, New Jersey 7, have her fill out that online casework form that's in the chat feature, and we will do our best to find an answer as well. Uh, then that goes for everyone on this call. Please use that casework or that contact form to reach out to us regarding any of your issues with the IRS. Um, that is all the time we have for today. But Kate, if you have any closing remarks or any last thoughts, uh, you can close out the call. Okay, um, I I just wanna I just wanna say um, you know I I hear I hear the concerns I I, I will certainly share them um, when I am back you know in meetings and um, you know I will I will see if we can get any more information about 2019 processing more details um, and. Other than that, I, I hope that this was helpful. I, I appreciate everyone's attention, um, and I I look forward to to helping you out if if you need if you need it. Thank you so much.